Angeles basketball. Jamal Wilkes, a great name, a great Laker, a great Bruin, you name it. Great L.A. basketball player. Good seeing you again, my friend. Thanks, Roy. Pleasure to be here. Now, the last time I saw you, you looked chunkier. Now you dropped the weight back down again. What was that, huh? Well, I was kind of sitting around a bit too much and still eating the same as though I were playing. And, uh -huh. uh, as many of the listeners out there know, that doesn't work. No. Uh, so I had to cut back on my eating. I'm starting to become more active again as far as working out and playing basketball and tennis again and lost a few of those pounds I had gained, right? Mm -hmm. You got that competitive edge back to try to compete against yourself to drop that extra weight, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, what we're going to do here before we start talking about the Laker days and the Laker era, we'll take a listen to a, a sound clip from Pat Riley reflecting on Jamal Wilkes and his contributions as a Laker. Here it is. Here's Pat Riley. He doesn't need to have his ego stroke. I think you can sense in Silk that he enjoys his peace and his tranquility, and he plays the game in his own furious way. He, by far and away to me, when I look at him and I see those green eyes of his some nights just sort of sparkling, uh, I know there's a heck of a lot more inside of him than, than he's ever really shown, but uh, that's his own secret. has been said and written about you. What do you think about you when you see that kind of thing, that clip? Oh, well, it certainly pushes very fond memories. It pushes certain buttons. Uh, I had a, a tremendous experience with the Lakers and in basketball generally, and uh, it just brings back nothing but pleasant, pleasant memories. Mm. The late Rick Nelson in that song, Garden mm. Party, said it best. He said, but if memories are all I have, I'd rather drive a truck <laughs> and you are doing, you were doing other things now. You were not just laying on those memories. Uh, you're going to school. Yes. And you're working towards a, a degree. And let's talk a little bit about that too. The new Jamal Wilkes. Well, uh, that's true. The new Jamal is a part-time student back at UCLA, mm -hmm. uh, studying advanced studies in uh, investments and uh, financial services. Wonderful. I've done a lot for various uh, charities, Boys Club of America. And you'll have an announcement coming up in the next week or so. We can't tell anybody what it is now. It's a real interesting program that Jamal's behind, right? We're very excited about it, Roy, and uh, thank you for that plug. Okay. <laughs> um, I, but I still do a lot for kids um, um, to fundraising for UCLA, the Los Angeles Urban League, um, and just 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 trying to find a new groove, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. We were talking before about uh, relying on the memories, on the great experiences, the golden era. Some guys do it for a career. They do it for the rest of their lives, and they have a lot of trouble doing that, relating to the real world, the realities, as it were. Yeah. It was difficult for you at first, the first nine months getting out of basketball. You spent all that time as a professional athlete, and it was a, a very kind of sullen time, quiet time, yeah. almost almost a sad time for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a, a difficult time, uh, doing one thing for so long. Um, and even though I saw the end coming, yeah, it's kind of like your mother or father dying. You, you know they're going to die, but when it happens, it's, it's still very emotional and very mm -hmm. shocking. But I think the, the biggest problem and the biggest sadness was I didn't know what to do. You know, um, <clears throat> with my time, for so many years, my time had always been managed sure. for me that that was a whole new world. And fortunately, uh, Valerie, my wife, was um, super. She didn't run me out the house or anything. And um, aside of the memories from playing basketball, I was very fortunate. I met some wonderful people mm -hmm. that, uh, that really took to me and uh, became very interested in what I was trying to do and what I was thinking. So I, I kind of networked mm -hmm. amongst various people to to get as quick of an education as I could um, because it really was an educational process. Beyond the shattering of the ego, and there is a, a shattering of the ego when, when a player of your stature has to get out, there is, I would imagine, a difficult time coming to grips with your own identity. You know, am I merely Jamal Wilkes professional athlete? Can I cut it as Jamal Wilkes citizen? Yeah, that, that is a very real process. And um, 
I think <clears throat> um, if you're fortunate enough to have the support and if you've done other things besides play basketball, then you can gradually come to grips with that. And, um, you know, and you sit down and, and you look at where you are and where you'd like to go and how do you get there. Mm -hmm. People have said they don't see Jamal around the forum much anymore. The other night for Chick Hearn, they had a bit of a testimonial at the forum club and we saw you there. It was good to see you again. Thank but you, you haven't been darkening the doors too much. Is that going to change? Is it, is it a slow evolution back to coming back as a, as a fan, as a spectator? I think so, Roy. Um, I've been to a few UCLA games this year, and it's the first time in 13 years mm. uh, <laughs> I've been back there. Wow. And, um, I will be around the playoffs uh, this year, um, but that one, honestly, I haven't figured out yet. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like a withdrawal, you know? It's like almost, in a sense, a drug. It's an addiction to the lifestyle and the guys and the fraternity among men, and to have to go back to it, it's... It's difficult, I imagine. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a major adjustment going back on a different level. Sure. And, um, and then, you know, to, to watch the game, you know, a lot of people will come up and want to know what you're doing yeah. now. And Whatever happened to you, that's a tough one to hear. Yeah. yeah. Whatever happened to you, oh, I'm still here, right? <laughs> you know? yeah, or well, didn't you used to be Jamal Wilkes? That's a strange, strange phrase. You know? But, you know, surprisingly, that really... Uh, probably because the Lakers are still hot, you know, that hasn't happened much yet, yeah, that's which good. has surprised me. It's also important for us to note that there is no resentment or bitterness or anger towards the Lakers, whatever perceptions people might have. You left, while I'm not on the best of terms, you've been able to deal with it and grow with it, and, you, and it sits very well in your, in your head and heart on how you left the Lakers now. Yes, it does. Uh, I have nothing but uh, fond memories of my, of my years there, uh, of the people there. Um, you know, they made a business decision. Uh, I understood that. Um, you know, I tried to come back with the other Los Angeles team. Uh, it didn't quite work out as I had hoped, but I tried, which was what I felt I had to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, I'm looking ahead and not behind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He's working towards getting ahead. Jamal Wilkes, best of luck with your, your new projects in store and going back to school, and we hope to see you at the forum before too long. Thanks, Rob. Good seeing you again. All right. Back with more right here on the Lake Pregame Show. After